how are you doing today? Good. Good. I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Dr. Janet Boberg, and I manage the Community Services Public Education. The Glendale Fire Department uh, offers a youth fire setter intervention program for children ages 3 to 17 that have had issues with fire. And your dad brought you in today because I understand that you've experimented with fire in the backyard. Is that correct? Okay. The first thing that will happen is the child will be brought in and I will interview the child to kind of get an understanding of the fire setting behavior that they have that got them to the class. I out that my friend and I had lit a fire in our backyard. We yeah. just the majority of the, the, the children that we get referred to the Youth Fire Setter Intervention Program are between the ages of 11 and 14. Um, and usually this particular age is where there's more experimentation because of things that they see on television, on the internet. So the next part of the presentation, we're going to talk about choices and consequences. And then we'll begin the class by discussing the consequences of fire setting. We'll discuss the arson laws. How hot do you think a fire gets? We'll discuss fire science. We'll discuss fire safety behaviors burn injuries, so we try to encompass all different aspects of the issues that may have led the child to set the fire. They would definitely be grounded. We'd have a... The fire setting doesn't stop until there's some kind of an intervention, and that intervention can be our class. It could be that the child ends up getting burned or even um, scares themselves because the fire that they set got out of control. I've seen fires set by kids who didn't intend to hurt anybody that day. Dr. Boberg approached me and asked if I would be interested uh, in becoming involved in the Youth Fire Setter Intervention Program, and of course we saw it as a perfect fit for me. Some friends came over. I was 13 years old at the time. We decided to go play with fire in the backyard. There was an explosion some un unintended consequences, and I was burned 35% of my body. I was burned on my arms, on my chest, on my stomach, part of my face. I had wet swimming trunks on at the time, fortunately, but everything above it was burned. I used to be on the other side of the table. I used to be the one that the firefighter was talking to. I literally had that conversation with the Phoenix firefighter, and I, I'm sure I put on a good show for my mom, but I didn't take it seriously. And now sitting on the other side of the table, I can say, you've got to take this seriously. I was there and I didn't. And look what happened. And, and I have a, a tangible example of what can happen. My parents struggled with my burn injury. It cost them financially. All told, it took almost a million dollars to treat my burns. I'm a great illustration of why you shouldn't play with fire. And I think I come with a few unique perspectives in order to convince them of that. Over to your friend's house and light those weeds on fire in the backyard. How did it affect your mom? What else is really nice is that by providing this information not only to the child but also to the parent, we can have a much safer fire safety experience at home. Dear Chief Burdick, I'm sorry for starting a fire. It was an experiment with my friend and I will not ever do it again. I've been teaching this program and involved with the Youth Fire Setter Intervention Program since 1999. I've interviewed well over 6,000 children and with a 1% recidivism rate, um, we see that as being very successful. I understand why it was wrong now. I wish I would have thought about it then rather than now. Best regards, Colette. P.S. I'm sorry for any inconvenience this may have caused you. 